What is up everybody? This is Mr. Storm and I'm going to show you the code for my rock, paper, scissors game <clears throat> because a lot of you requested uh, that I share this with you because uh, you're kind of struggling with this assignment and that's okay. Um, uh, I'm going to go through this code line by line and I'm going to try to give you as much detail as you possibly could need um, uh, to help understand how to build this assignment. So let's start talking about it. First statement here random rnd equals new random right this is just us calling the random uh and saying hey we want to use this random uh to create a new random number then we have var random num equals rnd dot next right we're basically calling this random that we created up here and we're using that random to find the next random number in that sequence what within this range zero to two, so zero, one, or two, because we only want zero, one, or two. And we're storing it in this random number variable here. Then we have a string array called comp options. And comp options has three indexes, right? In index zero, it has the word rock or the string, the character string, rock. In index one, it has paper. And in index two, it has scissors, right? So we only have three possibilities for our random number up here. We have zero, one, and two. We have three indexes in our array. We have index zero, index one, and index two. On the next line, we have var comp choice equals comp options random number. So what this is doing is we're creating a new variable called comp choice. This is going to store what the computer chooses uh, of these three indexes, right? So we're looking at the comp options array, which we've created up here. And we're saying the index we want to pull out of that comp options array is going to be either index one or sorry, either index zero, index one or index two based on this random number. So every time we play the game, it'll be different. It'll either be zero, one or two. So we're saying we either want rock, paper, or scissors to be stored into this comp choice variable, right? So we're just basically creating some kind of randomness to the game so the computer doesn't choose the same thing every time, and it uh, makes it a little bit more fun. Right here we have a variable called player choice, and we're just initializing it with an empty string. Uh, but this is where we're eventually going to store what our player's choice is uh, is going to be when they're uh, when they're playing the game. So that way we can compare comp choice and player choice to see who wins. Then down here we have a, co a couple of console write lines uh, that just kind of tell the player what we're doing. Hey, this is rock, paper, scissors. Uh, please type your choice below. And then here I have a console.write, which is uh, Tell, basically showing them where I want them to type their answer. So it just has choice, colon, and then a space so that when they start typing, it doesn't type exactly like really, really close to this. I wanted to give a little bit of space so it looks better. But the console.write, as opposed to a write line, is going to allow the these words to show up, whatever they type, to show up next to choice instead of below it on the next line. So then what we're doing is we're going to take this player choice variable and we're going to store inside of this player choice variable whatever they type. So we're going to read what they're typing, but we're also adding this two lower at the end, right? What this two lower is doing is it's making whatever they type lower case. So if they type uh, capital R, capital O, capital C, capital K, then it's actually going to turn that all into lower case R O C K so that when we do our comparisons later, it actually matches the strings that we've written up here, right? So we want that too, alo too lower to make the strings match when we're comparing. Okay, and next we're going to do a console clear, just because I like to clean the screen up and get rid of some of the text on it. Um, <clears throat> that's just my preference. That's not necessary, but I like it. It makes it look nice. Then I have a couple statements here that are basically just showing them what was chosen. So it shows them their choice again, and then it shows them the computer's choice so that they know what the computer chose, right? Um, then we have our if else statements, okay? Now these are a little bit complex, so I'm gonna go through them a little slowly. The first block we have here 
is if player choice equals comp choice. Basically, if we both pick the same thing, if I pick rock and the computer chooses rock, then we want to make sure that we let that, that the game ends in a draw, right? No one wins at that point. So we just send a message to our user saying, you both chose the same thing, your game ends in a draw, right? The next statement, else if, and then all of this, is basically, these are all of the conditions which would allow my user to win the game, right? So the message is you've won the game. So let's go through these one by one. So this first statement right here says, if the player choice equals rock and comp choice equals scissors. So if I choose rock, they choose scissors, rock smashes scissors, rock wins. So the next statement, like right here, these two pipes, these two vertical lines here, that means or. So if that happens, we win. Or if this next thing happens, right? The next thing is, oh, the program's doing weird stuff. The next thing is, if the player chooses scissors and the computer chooses paper, right? Paper cuts scissors or scissors cut paper. So scissors win. Or if the player chooses paper and the computer chooses rock, right? Paper covers rock. So we win in that case as well. Now in the end of your if statements, you do not want a semicolon, right? So don't put a semicolon at the end of your ifs. Okay, that's a big mistake. So that's the first else if, that's if we win. But what about if we lose? Well, it's basically the same thing, just in reverse, right? We tell them they lost the game, right? So if I choose rock and they choose paper, paper covers rock, I lose. If I choose scissors and they choose rock, rock smashes scissors, I lose. If I choose paper and they choose scissors, scissors cuts paper, I lose, right? So that's the logic of the game. Now. What happens if I type in something that isn't rock, paper, or scissors? Well, none of these statements up here are going to catch it um, because they're looking specifically for rock, paper, or scissors, right? I can type in whatever I want, and the game is still going to run. It's not going to break. It's not going to explode your computer because you typed in fire truck instead of rock, paper, or scissors. So we need this else down here to catch it. So basically what it says is, if it, anything other than those than these three conditions are true then this is what is going to happen it's basically going to say hey i don't understand that command i don't understand what you just typed right and then the final thing we have we have is a console read line which basically just stops the program from running so that it doesn't automatically close itself it lets us look at it and and it lets us kind of see what happened uh before it goes away and that's it. That's the whole program. Uh, it's really not that complicated. There's not a lot here. Um, but let's go ahead and run the program and see what it looks like uh, in the console. Now, this is really, really, really uh, um, not, not very easy to read, I know. Uh, but if we look really closely, we can see it says, Welcome to Rock, Paper, Scissors. Please type your choice below. And notice my cursor is blinking next to the word choice. So that means I have a space to write here. So I'm going to type in rock and hit enter. And it tells me I chose rock. The computer chose rock. We both chose the same thing. My game ends in a draw. Okay. Let's try it again and see what happens this time. I'm going to type rock again. So I chose rock. The computer chooses paper. I lost the game. Okay, so now we know the computer's randomly picking. Computer chose paper again. <clears throat> but we know the computer's randomly picking, and it's also correctly identifying the winner and loser in each game. But this is, this is it. This is the rock, paper, scissors game. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Come, uh, come talk to me in class. Um, uh, send me an email, do whatever you need to do. Um, but this, you know, the logic behind this game is pretty core, uh, logic. And if you understand it, then you're going to have, uh, you're not really going to have that, that hard of a time understanding the rest of the things that we're going to be doing. Um, so again, yeah, please let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in class.